So this video is going to be looking at a stoichiometry problem called gram to gram. And this is going to be the most common relationship or kind of calculation that we're going to do because we don't have instruments that measure in the mole. We have instruments that measure in grams. So this is going to be what uh, chemists use most often when we're doing these types of calculations. So I have a balanced chemical equation here and I have so many grams of one of the reactants or products. It doesn't matter what side of the equation I start with. So if I have 10.8 grams of aluminum, how many grams of aluminum oxide can be produced? So I call it a gram to gram because you're starting with grams and then you are ending with grams. So that's why it's called a gram to gram problem. Now, as we know, we can't compare grams to grams in chemistry, but we can compare the mole. So what we must always do is get things to moles first and then we could go wherever we want to go. So I'm gonna do these in kind of blocks, uh, and that's kind of how your worksheet is set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert grams to moles. So I'm gonna take the grams that are given to me and I'm gonna convert it to moles. So I'm gonna set up a relationship. So 10.8 grams of aluminum is how many moles of aluminum? So that's my X. So this is where, again, what we just did in the previous unit, we are going to look up the molar mass of aluminum. Well, it's around 27 grams for every one mole of aluminum set up as proportion, set up as proportion. So I cross multiply, I find that I take 10.8 divided by 27, and I get with three sig figs 0 0.400 moles of aluminum. So the next step is I'm gonna use what we call the balanced chemical equation to figure out what my mole to mole relationships are. So I'm gonna go from moles of aluminum to moles of what I'm looking for, which is the aluminum oxide. And I could do this for anything, okay? So I'm gonna take my 0 0.400 moles of aluminum, and this is where you need to write things down in terms of units. Units are gonna be very important when we're doing these types of calculations. So I have X moles of aluminum oxide. So now I go back to my balanced chemical equation. I have a four in front of the aluminum and a two in front of the aluminum oxide. Now again, you can bring this down to a two to one relationship. Um, if you want to do it that way, that's okay. Or just keep it as is from the balanced chemical equation. So I have how many moles to how many moles of aluminum oxide is what I have in this relationship. So again, I cross multiply and I find X is equal to about 0 0.200 moles of aluminum oxide. So the last step is to go from moles of aluminum oxide to grams of aluminum oxide. Okay, so now this is just like this problem, okay, like we did in unit two. So this is no different. Um, I'm just repurposing things. I'm just repurposing things. So again, I'm going to put moles on the bottom. So 0 0.200 moles of aluminum oxide. And I want to know how many grams that is. So I need the molar mass. So I need to add up two aluminum. So two times 27 and then three times 16. Add it all together, you get about a, a 102 grams for every one mole. So again, this is just like we did in unit two. There's no difference. So essentially, I'm um, cross multiplying here, and my X comes out to be 20.4 grams of aluminum oxide. So that's what I call a gram to gram problem. So 10.8 grams of aluminum will produce 20.4 grams of aluminum oxide. Okay, so you need these steps, three steps grams to moles, use the balanced equation to do your mole to mole. So this is now a mole to mole problem right in the middle. And then you go from moles to grams. So I'm just gonna change the balanced chemical equation, but the steps are exactly the same, okay? So how many grams of water can be produced from 4.6 grams of ammonia, okay? So I wanna know the uh, grams of water, and I'm starting with grams of ammonia. And you could start with anything in this balanced chemical equation, it does not matter. So why don't you pause the video and then come back and I will show you the answer. So three steps to this, okay? First step is to go from grams that you're given to moles. You will always have the relationship of molar mass. So ammonia is um, nitrogen, 14 plus three gives you a molar mass of 17. So you get 
uh, grams to moles, grams to moles, you get 0.27 moles of ammonia. You then always take the balanced chemical equation. So that's gonna give you your mole to mole relationship. So I have a four in front of ammonia. I have a six in front of the water. So I take my moles of ammonia over water. You could do it either way. And this is a four to six relationship. So I end up with 0.41 moles of water. The last step is always going from moles to grams. So it's the flip of what you started with over here. So now I'm in moles of ammonia, excuse me, <laughs> moles of water to grams of water. So I'm gonna put the grams on top and moles on bottom. That's just how I do it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, molar mass of water is 18 to one. So I cross multiply, I get 7.4 grams of water. So again, why don't you try this next one? but it is the same, same. It's just different numbers and different formulas from this balanced chemical equation. So you should have ended with 5.0 grams of water from 8.4 grams of NO. Again, you use molar mass of NO to convert to moles. You use the balanced chemical equation. Now it just so happens that the six is in front of the NO and six is in front of the water. So it actually is the same exact number because it's the same on both sides, meaning they're both sixes. So that's why you don't need to do the math. And then I convert the moles back to grams. Okay, so pretty standard gram to gram type problem. All you're gonna see is a different balanced chemical equation, different molar masses you have to use, but you will always be using the balanced chemical equation.